Hello everyone, this is Hammertron here with a new action figure review for you. This time I am reviewing the DC Multiverse Green Lantern Kyle Rayner action figure. This came out in 2022. I bought this through an online store in 2022. This is part of the Blackest Night storyline through the DC comic books. That storyline was maybe 10 years ago or more than 10 years ago. So here is the action figure in a nice window package where we can see the action figure, the accessories, and the build-a-figure piece. You collect four action figures to build Atrocitus, a Red Lantern. So this is the third part. Now this is made by McFarland Toys. So here's the front of the box. Here's the top with the window um, stretching over the top to let in more light. Here is the bottom with some manufacturing information. Here is one side where it says Green Lantern, Kyle, Rainer, Blackest Night. Here is the other side where the window wraps around and it also says Green Lantern, Kyle, Rainer. Here is the back of the box that shows Atrocitus, the builder figure here and the different parts that we collect to put it together. These are the other action figures in the wave. So I will open this up and review the action figure itself in just a moment. Here is the Green Lantern Kyle Rainier action figure. Let's take a look at the accessories that come with this action figure. Here's an action figure stand where it says DC at the bottom. Uh, one peg for the peg holes on the heels of the action figure. So, very simple and yeah, also useful. There is a trading card. This one has a picture of Kyle Rayner as a Green Lantern, it's just from a comic book apparently. On the back is a biography about Kyle Rayner and his history as a Green Lantern. Then we get a green lantern. This is made of a translucent green plastic. So it looks like it's nicely sculpted and it can just sit on any flat surface there. And then some sort of construct made by the green lantern power ring and this one looks like a sword. It's kind of pointy and sharp with a little handle and very thick blade so I think this might be a reused mold from perhaps a Japanese animated cartoon character that tend to have very large swords like this so it's either a reused mold or just a design that they thought would be cool for a green lantern so it, it does fit in his hand so let's take a look at the action figure itself It stands a little more than 7 inches tall or almost 18 centimeters tall. So that's a nice height for the action figure. Oops. Let's take a look at some of the details here. So he has a full head of hair. Some of this hair is pliable plastic hanging down over his forehead. There's his mask and he seems to have kind of a little smirk there. Now what I think is really interesting is this is a very light shade of green for Green Lantern. Usually it's a darker shade of green. However, perhaps in the comic book storyline the Green Lanterns had a lighter shade of green for their uniforms. So this is not Kyle Rayner's first uniform but uh, a later uniform that he had when the Green Lantern Corps was uh, rebuilt. So it has nice texturing throughout the body here and the green parts and the black parts. The white parts are a bit smoother. You can see his power ring and this is the gripping hand so the sword fits in there but the Green Lantern itself it's a little harder to get in there because of how these fingers are curled around. We might be able to uh, pry the fingers and thumb apart, but we don't want to do that too much, otherwise it'll break. 
and then here's part of the uniform part of it is on this separate piece of plastic here for the middle part and if we turn it breaks it up a little bit there's some uh, muscular legs here and I think the lower part might be a bit thin the boots are a bit smoother more of a rougher texture here and then we have the feet and I think the feet are just too small for an action figure of this size I think the feet should be larger it would certainly help with uh, balancing the action figure here's the bottom we have peg holes in the heels and it looks like some more sculpted and painted details so again this plastic for the middle part here has part of the uh, painted design but the colors don't quite match there so if we turn the waist it will break up the uh, design so it looks alright I like the texturing in the plastic I wonder if it's reused for other action figures but it looks alright let's take a look at the articulation so we can we cannot look up we can't that's as high, high up as we'll get we can look down a bit more turn side to side it's pretty loose and a lot of tilting there so that's nice we do have butterfly joints although not very big butterfly joints but it's it is there we can't get very much movement out of it. it tends to get stuck a little bit the shoulders will go out so it's pretty loose there and we can go around we have bicep cuts so it's a bit stiff I think part of the texturing here is causing more friction and making it hard to turn at the biceps and then double jointed elbows so very very nice and we can turn at the wrists both wrists but I don't see any hinges I haven't been able to get the hands to really move if it's bending I think it's pliable plastic so I really don't want to push too hard otherwise I think I'll snap a hand off so a little more limited articulation there we do have a diaphragm cut here but it doesn't really move we can't go forward we can go back just a little bit just a little bit of side to side we do have a waist cut turns a bit but more than a waist cut it seems maybe a ball joint at the bottom of the torso there so we get more articulation that way so that's pretty nice we can do the splits not too bad we can kick forward just a little bit and kick back just a little bit so we can't kick forward very high it's a little disappointing we can kick back a bit more now this middle part is more of a pliable plastic so as we move the legs around we're, we're bending that so I wonder if that will wear out after a while there's no upper thigh cut here we have double jointed knees so very nice a little hard to get into a sitting position in a chair but it'll work and then there's no boot cut here 
some action figures have a boot cut but not on this one and the ankles will go down quite a bit so very nice they'll go up quite a bit we have ankle pivot both ankles and toe articulation So, pretty nice. So, let's see if we can get this action figure to stand again. Now, this is about as far in as we can get the arms. If we want to make it look like they're closer, then we have to twist at the bicep cut. Otherwise, the arms will stick out a lot more. See, this is where we have problems getting the action figure to stand without an action figure um, stand. So the feet are just too small to really provide any support for the action figure. But we can do it. Here is Green Lantern Kyle Rayner next to a pair of 4 inch action figures. On the right is a 4 inch action figure from an Animal Planet set I reviewed a while ago. And on the left is the Fortnite Jonesy action figure, 4 inches, by Jazzwares. Here is Green Lantern Kyle Rayner next to a pair of 6 inch action figures. On the right is the Power Rangers Lightning Collection Mighty Morphin White Ranger. And on the left is the Marvel Legends Mr. Fantastic action figure. Both of those are made by Hasbro. Here we have Green Lantern Kyle Rayner next to a 6 inch Fortnite Legendary Series Havoc action figure by Jazzwares on the left. And on the right is the Masters of the Universe Masterverse He-Man action figure 7 inches by Mattel. And it looks like the He-Man action figure is just a tiny bit taller and also uh, beefier uh, chest and shoulders compared to Kyle Rainier. And it looks like all these action figures have larger feet than uh, Green Lantern Kyle Rainier. Here is Green Lantern Kyle Rainier next to the other action figures from this wave that I have already reviewed. On the left is the Black Lantern Batman. And on the right is the Black Lantern Death Storm. And it looks like the feet, all the action figures have small feet and that's getting a little annoying because it makes it a little more difficult to make them all stand. The Hammertron Sledgehammer rating for Green Lantern Kyle Rayner is okay. I'm sure Kyle Rayner is a little unhappy about that, but I'm sure my sledgehammer is more powerful than any green energy construct he can create with his power ring. The reason why it's uh, just okay is I think the feet are too small. It makes it a little harder to balance the action figure without the action figure stand. Um, also, some of the joints, especially the shoulder joints, are a bit loose right out of the package. And I'm just worried about how loose they already are after playing around with it for uh, just a few minutes here. Um, other than that, it actually looks pretty cool. And I'm sure the comic book story explains why his uniform is a bit lighter green than it normally would be for a Green Lantern. So I just haven't read that comic book story yet. So the action figure itself looks pretty good. I like the texture on the, the body and the arms and the legs. So uh, that's uh, a lot of nice detail in the action figure. So, thank you for watching my review video. Remember to like the video, leave a comment, and subscribe to my channel to keep up to date with my future reviews. I'll see you next time. Goodbye, everyone.